I think everybody, everybody wants to go home. Everybody, everybody has that has that passion to, to be able to do that. And, um, so yeah, I, I've always thought about coaching here. Uh, you know, I, I was very fortunate, in all honesty, growing up with the parents that I had and, and, and what they instilled in me and the work ethic that they instilled in me and, you know, the work ethic to, to try to do well in whatever it is you do and try to do well academically, try to do well athletically, try to do well socially and, um, you know, you just, you, know, you don't really get that choice, you know, you, uh, but I was very fortunate to have the parents that I had. Bob Huggins has been a success at every level he's coached, and this season will be particularly challenging. But Huggins likes this team he's inherited and what they bring to the court. I think the, the wonderful thing about this group, from my standpoint, I mean, I think from, from the fan standpoint, they're wonderful kids. They are just, they're, 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 they're great guys to be around, they're fun. But from my standpoint, they bring great enthusiasm. And it's not easy to do. You know, it's not easy to come in every day and grind it out for three hours and do it enthusiastically. And for the most part, they do that. And, uh, they want to be good. I think that's. I think that's the thing that that you see is that they want to be good. They 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 want to represent this university in this state and, and, it's, and the families in in the right way. And, and uh, it's. It's kind of fun to be around them. You know, I want our guys to get uh, everything they can possibly get out of it. And, and then I tell everybody I recruit, everybody I've ever recruited, I'm not going to cheat you. You know, well, you're not going to you're not going to look back and say, gosh, I wish he would have made me work harder. I, I wish he would have cared more. Uh, that's not going to happen. Huggins has been on the coaching carousel for over 30 years now. And when he's ready to jump off and retire, he'll do it right here in West Virginia. Yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm, uh, I want to win a national championship here. I want to hang a big banner, you know, a huge banner. It says national champions and um, get West Virginia back uh, where we year in and year out are, are a national power. And, um, and then whenever I wake up and say, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go fishing. Ted Toggington, I'm a registered junior. I'm guard for the West Virginia Mountaineers. You may not recognize the name, but there's no doubt you'll recognize the talent and passion. This walk-on from New Martinsville is working hard to make an impact on the program. A shooting guard out of Magnolia High School, Ted is living his dream every time he takes the court. I fell in love with the game the first day I played it. This West Virginia native grew up watching the Mountaineers and admiring those great student athletes. He dreamed that someday he would be one of those athletes donning the old gold and blue. When I watch this little kid, I mean, it just seems like it's a dream world. You're up there, everything seems like it'd be a huge deal, and you just look up to all the athletes on the football field and basketball court and all the other sports. And to, to be up representing the university and playing those games that you know other kids in the state are looking up to, I mean, it's just a great experience. Ted is doing an outstanding job representing his university and state. In the 2007 season, he played in 18 games and had an impressive showing against UCLA, scoring five points off the bench. So far this season, he's played in over 15 games. Though no matter how much playing time he gets, he still remembers his first time. First game as a Mountaineers is, is overwhelming. I mean, you played a high school. I went to high school where maybe 900 people would be there on a big game, and then to come here getting thousands of people. I mean, it's a little bit overwhelming. You're nervous. You don't want to mess up in front of a lot more students that are in the student section. So, I mean, it's, it's a nerve-wracking game, but you get over that eventually. The junior has overcome his nervous feelings and is having an influence on this team. But his journey as a walk-on has been challenging. He knew that there would be obstacles being a walk-on in Division I basketball. And he knew he would be competing against scholarship players who are stronger and more talented. However, his love for the game and his passion to achieve his best has given him the desire to overcome these obstacles. Being a walk-on has definitely been hard. I mean, athletically, you're not as gifted as everybody else on the team. You have to work harder than everybody else. And also, you're not getting paid to do everything. So, like in the summer, while they're just taking classes and going to workouts, I got to work too and stuff like that. It's a lot harder because you have to overcome a lot more. So, some may ask Ted, why did you do it? 
why be a walk-on at West Virginia? He had offers from smaller colleges, so why? Well, the answer is simple. He may have to work harder. He may have to give more than 100%. But after the smoke clears and after all the blood and sweat has been shed, the rewards are priceless. It's like a sense of pride. and You want to represent yourself and your family and your university, you know, like everybody on the team. You want, to, you, know, you want to represent them as well as possible. So that's kind of my inspiration on the court. You dream about playing in big games, and I've been to the Elite Eight, Sweet 16, and I teach championship game we won, and played against all the best teams in the country, and just to be a part of that, even if you're not playing a lot, it, it's worth it all in the end. There was one thing on Deshaun Butler's mind this past summer. I gotta get bigger, I gotta get bigger. I got a new coach, I gotta get stronger, and it, it, it turned out pretty well, like as far as how the summer went, and I got stronger and I got, I got a lot of weight on me. You may notice Deshaun is bigger, 20 pounds bigger, and he's lifting 100% more weight this year over last. Jeff GOC has been tremendous as far as getting me to where I need to be as far as strength goes. There's probably certain things I don't do that strong on the court now, but uh, last year I couldn't do them at all. So. Like, he helped me tremendously as far as the weight room. And just confidence and, and my strengths and my abilities are on the court and off the court, so I'm good. I think the one thing that sort of separates Deshaun is his versatility. He, uh, he can guard, he can rebound, he can score. He can score in a variety of ways, inside, outside. He handles the ball pretty good. I think his versatility is, is, is sort of his strength. That strength is reflected in his numbers. They are up, all of them. <laughs> Rimmed out no, and a rebound foul over the back, and Deshaun picks up his second. Boy, that, that's tough. Foul trouble is killing me, so I'm not really out there with my team. And I think if I was out there with my team a lot more, you know, th certain things would be a little bit different. That's the one thing that we have to correct. Uh, we, and, and Hugs talks to him all the time, and we all talk to him about he's not helping us if he's sitting on the bench with us. Play smart and play hard, play harder defense and not foul. He understands, uh, he has a tendency to, to every, every now and then commit a uh, a foul that's not uh, a real intelligent foul, and uh, and that's again out of his passion and out of his, uh, his his wanting to do so good. After a second foul and I come out of the game, I'm like, wow, I could have just prevented myself from doing that. But and that's just me just maturing stuff and knowing when and when not to do stuff. Maturity is something Butler is learning quickly as a sophomore leader on the team. Coach Huggins tells him to play the senior, not the sophomore. I just had to take it as, okay, I just came in last year, I'm learning, I'm learning this year, but I can't mess up as much because I just want to keep the team, like, you know, steady and just do my job. He has done his job. Of the Mountaineers who have played all 19 games, Butler has a field goal percentage of 53, the highest on the team. Honestly, I don't even realize it because yeah, the games people tell me that uh, I shot very well, I feel like, wow. I, 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 the only thing I can think about is the shots that I miss. So I'm just really just playing, and trying to play with confidence and shoot the ball with confidence, and just try to play hard and attack the goal and try to get a win. But you know, everything's turned out the way the way uh, I expected it to, as far as just winning games and you knocking down shots because that's what players do. And and I'm just trying to help my team win. It's pretty extraordinary, you know, to have a coaching change and not have a, a transitional period where the program's down. I really believe we're playing well together um, because of the the uh, adversity we had to go through with the coaching change. You know, there was, there was a time there where there was three weeks we had no staff here, and it was just us, and, you know, we had to really, like, rely on each other and really, you know, come together, and I think that really helped with uh, our chemistry, our team chemistry. Even though it's a different coaching staff, it's the same players. Um, you know, my contributions to the team really haven't changed uh, than did last year, you know, with the coaching change. 
I'm still, you know, just make, knocking down open shots and, you know, feeding people the ball. Drew off, fires into the lane, all the way in, layup shot, yeah, Drew off now, Butler. Drew off, three, good! I've always liked shooting threes, you know, even in high school, but my size advantage in high school, I didn't shoot that many. Uh, you know, I took advantage on the post more than I did shoot threes. But uh, once I got to college and I wasn't the tallest guy on the team anymore, you know, outside shooting became uh, an important part of my game. But uh, I think my defense has been the main thing that I've improved. Uh, last year with the three zone, we kind of got away with not being as athletic as other people and, you know, guarding people man to man. So I think we really worked hard this offseason on defense. I think regular students really don't grasp the, uh, the business side of college athletics. A lot of our time is obligated towards the sport more than they know. You know, during the off season, whether it be lifts, you know, workouts, they really just don't see it. They think, uh, you know, we have it easy. You know, uh, they don't they don't really think about the classes we missed during the second semester with our big East schedule traveling, how hard that is to keep your grades up. Um, and uh, they don't understand that, you know, we're here during holidays. We're here all summer. Uh, we don't get to go home and, you know, relax with our families like most students do. Um, it's more like a job. I don't think they understand the aspect. This is more like a job and we really earn our scholarships. I've done real well academically. That was one thing I was afraid of coming into college. Um, you know, my, I've, I've gotten stronger spiritually uh, as I came to college, which was shocking because I kind of got away from church, you know, when I was in high school. But uh, since I've been away from my family, I've really relied on that and really, you know, use that as strength, you know, during, you know, my tough times here at college. Um, on the court, uh, you know, the gains I've made in the past three years, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, but at the same time, I know there's a lot more room to grow. I have a lot more potential to be a better player. If I take a step back and, and look at where I'm at right now, I'm at a Big East school. You know, we play on national television, we're on you know, Sports Center and ESPN News all the time. And, you know, just five years ago, I'm, you know, the youngest of three kids, you know, the single mom, and, and I'm just an average high school player. It's not really that extraordinary. So I've come a long way. Uh, it's, it's really, it's, I don't want to say a dream come true, but it is in a way. And, you know, I have to stay humble and I have to, you know, don't, not take this for granted. Really enjoy this moment because it goes so fast. I'm real happy, you know, with the season we've had so far. I think we're going to have a great, you know, second half of the season. I'm looking forward to it. But uh, I'm, just, I'm just real proud, you know, to be playing for West Virginia. Uh, you know, even both coaching staff, the, the West Virginia fans and, you know, the tradition in the program, it hasn't changed. And, you know, just to be a part of it is something that will, you know, hold dear to us for the rest of our lives. So just, you know, I want to send like a thanks out to the fans. You know, that's something that they've made special in each one of our lives. Joe Missoula played well as a freshman, despite a thigh bruise that hampered his season. As a sophomore this year, Missoula is ready to show his style of play. I enjoy you know, being the crazy, energetic kid who you know, makes everybody laugh and you know, who makes, makes things go by smoothly. And I kind of bring that crazy side on the court. I play a, you know, a little reckless. Um, but I just try to play as hard as I can. And I think that brings you know, a lot of energy to the team and it helps us. Joe's the kind of guy who kind of exudes energy and, and I think gets other guys going for us. That energy has been focused on improvement, especially defense. When Coach Huggins gets his players to play and he gets the best out of them. And you know, when I'm on defense, I, I play defense for him, I play for my teammates and I try to go as hard as I can you know, to help us. And I think, it, I think because I, I concentrate more mentally and I'm mentally stronger, I think that helps my defense more than it did in the past. Well, Joe uh, is a guy who uh, wants to guard the opponent's best player, uh, and, and whether that's a guard or whether that's a post guy, I mean, he'll guard whoever you ask him to guard and, and, and do it with, with great intensity. Expectations are high for Missoula's role next year. I tell him all the time, man, you, you're our point guard for next year, but don't wait till next year to start being the point guard. Run your team now. Coach Martin has, is always in my air, is always behind me. You know, telling me how to be a great leader and how to be a great point guard. You know, point guard are the people who are supposed to put players in their spot and know everyone's position. Great point guards. And I think that, you know, being behind Darius for two years, I will gain some experience as well as how to be a good point guard. And I, I do have to get a head start on it now. And I don't want to start next August trying to be the team's point guard and the team's leader. I feel if I could gain my experience and my confidence every day in practice, then that will help us in the long run. 
Well, I think Darius is a great example of you know what a point guard does. He he's the glue of the team. You know, he holds the team together. He calls out the plays. He makes sure everybody is in the right spot, and you know he makes sure on offense we know what play we're running and make sure that it's going fluently. In the front court comes Darius Nichols over to Alex Ruoff. Ruoff backdoor cut Nichols layup good beautiful play. And hits big shots in big games and you know makes makes the right play at the right time. Making the right play at the right time is what this game is all about. So, what advantage does Missoula capitalize on during a game? Well, he's a southpaw. I think being left-handed does give you know us some type of advantage because you know there are defenders who don't aren't really used to playing against left-handers, so they use, they're used to forcing people to their left. And if they close out on me wrong left, then I go left. You know, so I think it's tough for them to you know, look at a player and say, "Oh, I forgot that he's left-handed," because there are very few of them. Missoula driving to the basket all the way in, spins, reverse layup shot, it's good and a foul! How do you like Joe Missoula? He was at an impossible angle and he just threw the ball straight up on his way to the basket and it fell in. Joe Missoula. Basketball means everything to me, to my family, and you know, to where I'm from. And my entire family was brought up around basketball and, and that's what I was born into. So, you know, being around my dad and my cousins and my uncles who played for years. You just have, you just grow a love for the game. And that's what I've done over the last, you know, 14 or 15 years. And that's why I'm here today. No one gets Mountaineer fans on their feet faster than Joe Alexander. To be able to play in front of people who you know support you and you know really want to see you do well, and it just makes you feel that much better when you do well. Because you know you're, you know, you're satisfying them, and you know, it's kind of like an extension of satisfying yourself. It's very impressive to watch him lift. He's by far the most explosive athlete I've ever trained. Alexander does everything he possibly can do. He sits in my office for hours after the lift and just talks to me about different training regimens, what he can do, how he, how he can improve himself. It's, it's truly amazing, I love working with him. He warms up with more than he used to lift with. Joe, when he came in, he weighed, uh, when he came in as, as a freshman, he, he was 188. He got up to 230 this summer. Um, his hang cleans went from 200 up to 380. Uh, his bench went up to 350 from probably about 270 maybe. Tremendous, tremendous turnout. And, and honestly, it, it's all attributed to Joe. Well, the biggest difference is uh, size and strength. Strength-wise, I um, just got a whole lot stronger, and it made everything in the game a lot easier. It was a lot easier to get rebounds and uh, to take my man off the dribble. All the hard work in the weight room has been noticed. Joe's been nominated to be an NSCA Strength and Conditioning All-American. It's just pure work with him. Uh, whether he's in the weight room, how he eats, uh, he's one of the few that puts it all together. Well, Joe's gotten a lot better. You know, I think Joe's become a better basketball player. I mean, everybody realizes Joe's always been a great athlete, but I think Joe's starting to um, become a basketball player as well. And, you know, I don't think we've seen uh, even close to the best of, of Joe Alexander. He's doing everything he can to try to help me become a better basketball player. I'm trying to do everything I can on my part to help. You know, there's a million roadblocks, and it's, it's really tough sometimes, but um, just, both of us are just uh, trying to keep on pushing through it. And, and Joe continues to learn. He continues to, to, to grow as a basketball player because he just he didn't play basketball at, a, at an early age. Uh, I mean, I think uh, potentially, I mean, Joe can just continue to get better and better and better because his his knowledge is going to continue to increase. Basketball is never going to be easy. I mean, it's tough. It's there's ups and there's downs. And if it was all easy, I mean, why would you want to do it? Uh, 
I'm in this for the long haul, and even though it's hard, I, mean, I still enjoy it and I still want to do it. Sends a right wing for Wellington, driving baseline right all the way to the basket, slam, dunk! Here are three things you need to know about Wellington Smith. He's athletic. He can shoot from the perimeter. He plays exceptional defense. So when Bob Huggins arrived, the question was, how would Wellington fit into the Huggins style of basketball? I was excited because I knew that my athleticism and uh, the way I play the game would basically fit the way he wants to teach it, he teach the game. You know, I'm, I'm kind of excited right now, you know, so basically starting anew and uh, just had to show him, you know, what I'm trying to bring to the team. When I, when I block shots, it's more like, more just timing, more just, you know, anticipating. Okasan comes up with it, his shot rejected again by Wellington Smith. I see Joe Alexander jump, and I'm like, wow, I, I wish I could get up as, as high as he could. Here we go. It's okay that I could get up a little bit. <laughs> I guess it's fine. <laughs> and that's what you get from the New Jersey native, a guy who works constantly to improve his game, and a guy who will never shy away from a smile. Yay! Jersey represents big. Oh, oh. Well, I'm really proud of him, you know. he, he uh, Early on, he just he kind of hung around a three-point line, wanted to shoot threes, and with his athleticism and, and, and really his ball skills, he ought to be able to get the ball to the basket more and get to the foul line more, and he ought to be uh, a lot, should have been a lot more active defensively, and I, and I think that's what he's become. So maybe the one thing Well does well is, well, a little bit of everything. I like being versatile, playing defense, uh, being able to run and, uh, you know, shooting like mid-range jump shots, um, driving to the basket now. He'll step in, get it to Butler, a wide open three, right side, no, follow-up slam dunk, Wellington Smith. Oh, he loved it. You know, I always wanted to be like, I want to do that. But, you know, I never had the mentality to do that because I was out, you know, always outside. I want to get the mentality to do that and just being a better, you know, IQ player. I think he's really taken it to heart. Uh, you know, the majority of his points now come by attacking the rim. Bring it back. Uh, offensive rebound, and he's worked really hard on his free throw shooting. And defensively, he, he gets to the ball better than anybody we have, and, and he's the guy who can make plays off the ball for us. Right side corner, here's Flowers, three, too strong. Rebound, Wellington Smith, pump fakes, pump fakes again, shoots and scores two. Yeah, coming down the lane. Wellington really needed that. You know, I just want to be a great player for Huggins. You know, I just want to be one of those guys that you can depend on. And, uh, you know, down the road, I feel like I can be. Um, obviously, I'm only a sophomore right now, so in the next two years, I'm hoping that, you know, no matter what guys he brings in, he could always, you know, come back and say, you know, that he could trust me. Bring it back. When I leave West Virginia, I want him to have stories about me, like he had stories about Keenan Martin and you know Jason Maxfield and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that could happen for me. Right wing goes behind the uh, legs, all the way to the basket. Bring it back. Wellington Smith. I think I just try and play smart when I'm out there, use my experience. You know, being a fifth year and haven't seen a lot. If you're going to play with Coach Huggins, a big thing is uh, effort. You know, he likes guys that are going to play hard. I'm not the best leaper or the fastest guy in the world, but I think in a lot of ways I've made strides and just playing with more effort, and it definitely helps out the team. You know, it helps out my game a lot more. I think that this team doesn't need me, you know, to score to win. It's just a bonus if I can hit some shots, but I try and help, you know, make it easier for the other guys who we need to score to get open looks. I hope everybody realizes how much better Jamie's gotten this year. I mean, Jamie has really made a concerted effort to, to, to really work at getting better, and um, you know, particularly at the defensive end of the floor. In the preseason, Coach Huggins would joke with me about how, you know, if I was you, I wouldn't let my guy catch it because you can't guard a thing. <laughs> But, so I guess that was kind of the mindset when I had to guard Hibbert. 
was just to try and not let him catch the ball. Uh, and then that would just goes back to playing with effort. You know, I tried to outwork him and beat him to the spots, and I think that helped a lot, definitely. I'm trying to finish strong, and I've been fortunate to be able to play with such great guys, and it's something I'm definitely going to miss. Win! Coach Bob Huggins says Darris is the epitome of what basketball is supposed to be all about. I'm kind of a quiet person, so you know, I kind of lead by example. And I just try to work as hard as I can. He comes in every day with the same attitude. He comes in to work. He comes in to get better. I think a lot of people, you know, they look at college athletes and, and I think we have a made just because they see us on TV and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I do consider this the real world. I may be wrong, but, you know, it's... We still have to work for, you know, the scholarship. In four years, Darius's work has built him an impressive resume. My freshman year, people count us out from the start. Then with the biggest tournament, you know, shocking the, shocking the country. Nicely done. The West Virginia Mountaineers have advanced by knocking off the number one seed, Boston College Eagles. Hey, Tony, pinch me. We're playing on Friday. Gansy's got a chance to just about seal a trip into the championship game. They got to throw this ball a long way. And West Virginia is going to the championship game here in the Big East. Nichols' most special memory was the Wake Forest game on the way to the Elite Eight. It was my first time, you know, being on a big stage like that. Me coming from, you know, a small town. I was nervous and I made plays that game. And it was just, you know, it was just a great feeling. There has continued to be a big part in big games on the path to the 2006 Sweet 16. Air ball. Oh, oh, good! Oh, Nichols dropping a dime with the kiss. Who can forget beating number two rated UCLA at home or winning the NIT championship? Earlier this year, Darris was recognized by Radford, Virginia's city council. It was them just acknowledging me, say, being an am ambassador to the, to the community. You know, this is a big honor, you know, coming from where I'm from, you know, it's a real small town. All these accomplishments while painstakingly becoming the only Mountaineer to play in 133 consecutive games. To play as many games in a row as what he's played here and, and break the school record is, a, is an unbelievable feat. Now, Darius has a secret on how he accomplished his Ironman milestone. It's how you handle yourself off the court. You know, going to bed early, things like that, and just eating the right foods. And we have good trainers here and great strength staff, and I think, I think that's what kept me on the court. Despite his experience, Darius says he's not always teaching. Sometimes I have to ask the younger guys, who, who the new guys are and since they've played against them before I have. So, you know, I can help them as well as they can help me. And, you know, I'm always trying to learn new things. With Coach Huggins' arrival, the Mountaineers focused more on defense. Since he came in, a lot of a lot of people around the country didn't think I could play defense and just try to keep my man from scoring and just try to help everybody else out. You know, he's a legendary coach. He's been a coach for over 30 years and put so many players in the NBA. I have no choice not to listen to him. So what's next for this Mountaineer? I don't even know. That's the scary part. You know, in the past, you know, I know I'd be in summer school all summer and working out, running hills and stuff like that. But but now, you know, I really don't know. I know I'm gonna play somewhere, but I just don't know yet. Now let's meet the senior Mountaineers, a senior who came to West Virginia from New Martinsville, West Virginia. Number 32, Ted Talkington. Teddy's great. I mean, Teddy, Teddy comes in and, and, and early in the year really helped us. And we're struggling to make a shot. He said, he said yeah, Coach, I'll make some shots. Came in and made a shot and, and has, really, has really helped us. Next, a senior who came to West Virginia from East Grand Rapids, Michigan. Number 43, Jamie Smulligan. You know, Jamie's progress has been absolutely phenomenal. And I think, I think that goes unnoticed, how, how unselfish Jamie's been this year. And he gives, he gives for the team. And a senior from Radford, Virginia, number 14, Darius Nichols. Darius has been so good for so long, and, and a guy that you just give him the ball and know he's going to take care of it. 
you know, I think all of our guys understand how hard they've worked. You know, they, they've been terrific. You know, but everybody keeps saying, well, you know, are they having a hard time adjusting to your style? They just want to play basketball and they want to win. win. Quarterfinal round action from the Big East Conference Tournament at Madison Square Garden. Into Butler, a far jump shot, three-pointer up, and it is good. Now here's Nichols driving the ball left side all the way to the basket. Floats the ball out front to Rua for an open three. It's up, it's in. Puts it on the floor, backing in against Adrian. Turnaround jump shot, up and in for Joe Alexander. His first two. Well taken by Darius Nichols. He drives the ball against White. Spins in the lane, puts up a high floater. It's up, around, and in for Darius Nichols. Darius Nichols gives the ball to Joe Alexander. Joe drives in against the beat. Spins, shot up, in for Joe Alexander over Hashim the beat. Deshaun Butler gets the ball, working hard, driving right side, layup shot, off glass, two. Oh, to Joe Alexander, he'll try an 18-footer straight away. Swish for Joe Alexander over Jeff Adrian. Gets his miss back, sends it out to Darius Nichols, straight away, three ball, he hit it. Now Flowers left corner open is Deshaun Butler, he'll put up the shot. It's good for two for Deshaun Butler. Sends the ball to Alexander. Alexander takes it in the paint. Pulls up 15-foot jumper. Good for Joe. Hides left side. Gets the ball in the lane. Stolen by Joe Mazzula. Mazzula's racing down the floor. Two Huskies go in between. Mazzula lands shot. Good from the left side. Boy, I'll tell you what. Energetic. They have really brought their game this afternoon. Mazzula penetrates in the lane. Sends it open. Left corner. Butler for a three. Yes! Flowers on the right side wing. Alexander gets the ball. Turn around. Jumper up. Sweet shot. They hit another one. Near right side wing, Alex grew up, backdoor cut, Nichols catches, shoots, scores. How many times have we seen that play? Ball goes to Deshaun Butler, he drives the basket, layup shot on the rim, no, he puts it back up and scores two. Deshaun Butler's got 14. Deshaun gets it to Joe Alexander. Joe Alexander drives, left side. Pull up, baseline shot, good for Joe. Joe Alexander, Alexander lobs it underneath, Smalligan goes up, slams up for Smalligan with 8.05 to go. Deshaun clears the rebound, down the floor, open for Joe Alexander. Alexander goes to the basket, slams up over Robinson. Oh, One minute to go, Alexander slams up the ball and Robinson's win. The West Virginia University Mountaineers are on their way to the semifinal round of the Big East Conference Tournament. side wing taken by Nichols. Out top to Alexander. He'll push up a long jumper. It's good. Back up front to Butler. Gets a top circle. Nichols for a three. Yes, Darius Nichols hit a three-pointer from straightaway center field. Between the legs. Sends it to Rue off a wide open right side. Three. He hit it. Ball inside to Alexander. Turn around. Jumper off glass for Joe over McClellan is good. Sends the ball back out front to Ruoff. Wide open left corner. Missoula for a high arcing three. He hit it. How do you like Joey Missoula? Takes button go to the basket. Baseline pull up jumper. Deshaun hit another from 15 away. Butler on the right block, turnaround, jumper, pop, and in! Whoa, Deshaun is hot, he's hot, he's hot! Kevin O'Neill takes a timeout. Butler drives the ball, a 15-footer straight away. He hit another one! Deshaun Butler's got nine. Up the sideline to Ruoff, long three for Alex, in! Alex Ruoff with his second three-pointer of the night. Bounces the ball left side to Nichols, deep left corner, Ruoff pushes up a three. He hit it! Alex Ruoff with 11 points. Sends it out right of the circle to Ruoff. Ruoff going to pull up for another three. He hit it! Alex Ruoff with the jumper. Timeout Arizona. Bounces the ball to Alexander left block against McClellan. Puts up a 13-footer and he hit it over Jerron McClellan. Alexander pulls up, shot on left, no good rebound, but they lays it up and in! Jarrett Nichols up the floor, he charges. Jarrett goes behind his back. Gets it to Butler, lay up, yes! Oh, was that pretty, and he waited for Butler to come in on that wing. His pass to Nichols with four on the clock, a jumper up, in and out, good! Oh. It banged around, and it goes in for three! To Ruoff, Ruoff, stop, pop, three ball, up, in! Oh. Alex Ruoff hit another three! And about
Buccaneers lead by seven with 3.10 to go. Comes over and sets the screen on wide. Garrett's going to stop the top of three ball. He hit it! Darius Nichols buries the three. Stolen by Alexander. Threw off out of head, takes it. Threw off drive, shoots, and he lays it up and in. See the West Virginia University Mountaineers have advanced to the second round of the NCAA tournament. And we are underway in the second round. Got to make a play against Henderson. Driving, spinning, ball away, baseline jumper up around the rim and in. Takes it to the middle. Looks, gets it to Joe Alexander. Right of the lane. Joe catches, double team, forces up a shot. He banked it in. Good. West Virginia leads 4 0. Down, lays the ball up and in. Alexander gives up his dribble, gets it to Missoula. Missoula right down the middle. He dunks it down. Forever and ever. the flowers way up. We can be heroes. off driving, pulls up, 13 footer up and in. Locks it into Alexander. Alexander on the right side block, puts on the floor. Pulls 12 footer up and in for Joe Alexander, his ninth point. Alexander catches it, gets the ball back to Darius Nichols. Nichols down the lane, layup shot, good! Nichols, he'll try the three ball, up no good. Rebound Alexander underneath. Alexander in the crowd, double pump, puts up the shot and scores two. Boy, that was a heck of a rebound. Wow! Nichols underneath Alexander, shot off glass, up no good. Follow up rebound, Butler lays it up and in. down to three. It's the two. Ruoff puts up a prayer from the corner. It's good from the right corner for three. Just one, two. Tie it up. Tie it up. Butler out front to Missoula. Now to a cutting Alexander. Down the lane he goes. Layup shot. Good and a foul. Circle taken by Singler. Jab step, drives to the basket, shot rejected by Alexander. Nichols gets it to Alexander. He'll try the three ball. It's up and in for three for Alexander. 43-40. West Virginia leads by three on the other end. Nelson drives into the lane. Puts up a shot. Rejected by Alexander. Alexander, Alexander with Thomas underneath back row cut. Ruoff layup good. Over to Alex Ruoff now up top to Joe Alexander. Alexander back door cut. Cam Thurman layup good. Oh what a read by Cam. Gets the ball underneath to Alexander. Alexander nearly lost it. Throws down to Ruoff. Here's an open three from the left side. Yes. yes. Alex Ruoff hit it. Baby. In the lane he goes. Drop steps in a crowd. Traps the two and Thurman layup good. Where did that come from? I don't know, but Thurman's all over the place. We're down to two, we're down to one, and we are on the way to the Sweet 16. As soon as I put my feet on the ground here in, in this great state, I've, I've kind of been walking on air ever since. To go to school here and, and then on top of that play basketball here, it's, a, it's an unbelievable fraternity and we're going to represent this great state well. You know, I like going to practice. I like teaching. I like doing what we do. I think everybody, everybody wants to go home. Everybody, everybody has that, has that passion to, to be able to do that. 
so yeah, I, I've always thought about coaching here. Uh, you know, I, I was very fortunate in all honesty growing up with the parents that I had and, and, and what they instilled in me and the work ethic that they instilled in me. And, you know, the work ethic to, to try to do well in whatever it is you do and try to do well academically, try to do well athletically, try to do well socially. And, um, you know, you just, you, you don't really get that choice, you know. You, uh, well, I was very fortunate to have the parents that I had. Bob Huggins has been a success at every level he's coached, and this season will be particularly challenging. But Huggins likes this team he's inherited and what they bring. I think everybody, everybody wants to go home. Everybody, everybody has that has that passion to, to be able to do that. And, uh, so yeah, I, I've always thought about coaching here. Uh, you know, I, I was very fortunate, in all honesty, growing up with the parents that I had and, and, and what they instilled in me and the work ethic that they instilled in me. And, you know, the work ethic to, to try to do well in whatever it is you do and try to do well academically, try to do well athletically, try to do well socially. And, um, you know, you just, you, you don't really get that choice, you know. You, uh, well, I was very fortunate to have the parents that I had. Bob Huggins has been a success at every level he's coached, and this season will be particularly challenging. But Huggins likes this team he's inherited and what they bring to the court. I think the, the wonderful thing about this group from my standpoint, I mean, I think from, from the fan standpoint, they're wonderful kids. They are just, they're, 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 they're great guys to be around, they're fun. But from my standpoint, they bring great enthusiasm. I think everybody, everybody wants to go home. Everybody, everybody has that has that passion to, to be able to do that. And, um, so, yeah, I, I've always thought about coaching here. Uh, you know, I, I was very fortunate, in all honesty, growing up with the parents that I had and, and, and what they instilled in me and the work ethic that they instilled in me. And, you know, the work ethic to, to try to do well in whatever it is you do and try to do well academically, try to do well athletically, try to do well socially. And, um, you know, you just... You don't really get that choice, you know. You, uh, well, I was very fortunate to have the parents that I had. Bob Huggins has been a success at every level he's coached, and this season will be particularly challenging. But Huggins likes this team he's inherited and what they bring to the court. I think the, the wonderful thing about this group, from my standpoint, I mean, I think from, from the fan standpoint, they're wonderful kids. They are just, they're, 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 they're great guys to be around, they're fun. But from my standpoint, they bring great enthusiasm. Uh, and, and it's not easy to do. You know, it's not easy to come in every day and grind it out for three hours and do it enthusiastically. And for the most part, they do that. And, uh, they want to be good. I think that's, I think that's the thing that, that you see is that they want to be good. They, they, they want to represent this university in this state and, and, and their families in, in the right way. And, and uh, it's, it's kind of fun to be around them. You know, I want our guys to get uh, everything they can possibly get out of it. And, and then I tell everybody I recruit, everybody I've ever recruited, I'm not going to cheat you. You know, well, you're not going to you're not going to look back and say, gosh, I wish he would have made me work harder. I, I wish he would have cared more. Um, that's not going to happen. Huggins has been on the coaching carousel for over 30 years now. And when he's ready to jump off and retire, he'll do it right here in West Virginia. Yeah, I'm done. I'm, I'm, uh, I want to win a national championship here. I want to hang a big banner, you know, a huge banner. It says national champions and uh, get West Virginia back uh, where we year in and year out are, are a national power. And, um, and then whenever I wake up and say, I'm not sure I want to do this anymore, then I'm going I'm to go fishing. Ted Toggington, I'm a redshirt junior. I'm guard for the West Virginia Mountaineers. You may not recognize the name, but there's no doubt you'll recognize the talent and passion. This walk-on from New Martinsville is working hard to make an impact on the program. A shooting guard out of Magnolia High School, Ted is living his dream every time he takes the court. I fell in love with the game the first day I played it. This West Virginia native grew up watching the Mountaineers and admiring those great student athletes. He dreamed that someday he would be one of those athletes donning the old gold and blue. When I was 
Watch this little kid, I mean, it just seems like it's a dream world. You're out there, everything seems like it'd be a huge deal, and you just look up to all the athletes on the football field and basketball court and all the other sports. And to, to be up, representing the university and playing those games that you know other kids in the state are looking up to, I mean, it's just a great experience. Ted is doing an outstanding job representing his university and state. In the 2007 season, he played in 18 games and had an impressive showing against UCLA, scoring five points off the bench. So far this season, he's played in over 15 games, though no matter how much playing time he gets, he still remembers his first time. First game was the Mountaineers is, is overwhelming. I mean, he played a high school. I went to high school where maybe 900 people would be there on a big game. And then to come here and getting thousands of people, I mean, it's a little bit overwhelming. You're nervous. I don't want to mess up in front of a lot more students that are in the student section, so it was, it was a nerve-wracking game. Again. Look at that protection. And Jim Calhoun wants to put an end to this run quickly. What a performance by West Virginia. What a beautiful play to begin the second half. I'm telling you, rebounding has been the biggest difference in this game on both ends for West Virginia. Boy, if they look at their game. Sends the ball to Joe Alexander. Alexander lobs it underneath. Smalligan goes up. Slam! Up for Smalligan! Bob Huggins takes over. Born and raised a Mountaineer. What a wonderful job he's done of coaching this team. The man wide open. It's Alexander. Robinson. Oh, oh, it's a oh, dunk oh, right in his face. They solidify their NCAA tournament bid. West Virginia and Arizona opening round of the NCAA tournament. And Alexander. And Nichols for a three. Yes. Ruoff. West Virginia off to a perfect start. Alexander, how about that kiss off the glass? <laughs> Butler, jumper, good for three. Jumper up and in. Whoa, Deshaun is hot. He's hot. He's hot. And Kevin O'Neill takes a timeout. Ruoff deep. Number three. Ruoff going to pull up for another three. He hit it. Alex Ruoff, timeout Arizona. Butler takes the miss by Alexander. Uncontested. Nichols behind the back. Oh, how about the feed inside? Nichols with four on the clock, a jumper up, in and out, good! It banged around and it goes in. Good look. Hey, down she goes. Are you kidding me? Darius going to stop and pop a three ball. He hit it! Darius Nichols buries the three. These guards are outstanding. West Virginia wins their 25th game of the season, and they will move on to take on Duke. Intensity level very, very high here. Butler turns and drops down the first shot. Joe Alexander, watch this. Four white jerseys around him. Strength to get it up anyway. What a player. Missoula to Flowers. Missoula's the MVP of the Mountaineers right now. Off the bench. Down the lane, layup shot, good. Leaves it on a tough pass. The catch, the shoot. Oh! Cutting Alexander down the lane, he goes. Layup shot, good, and a foul! Ball has the emotion in this building flip-flop. Alexander, three ball, all the way, looks good, yes!
Pedro Cabrera, layup, good! Yeah, the back door against Paulus, beautifully done. The cut. How about that? Down low, Alexander caught it out front, Rue off the three. Oh, how big is that? Missoula in traffic. Up and in! Thurman! Looks, bounces the ball to Missoula. Missoula underneath the Ruoff. Layup. Good. And we are on the way to the Sweet 16. West Virginia. Here they come. Thanks for letting me come home.